Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome all my dear pupils to our new English lesson today. Today we are going to study unit 12, lesson 7 and 8. Okay? Now I want you to prepare your students' book and your pen and pay attention with me. Now let's start and listen about the classes of nature, as you know, in our past lessons. Now, uh, can you mention some attractive forces of nature? We studied them before. Uh, yeah, of course, we have volcanoes, tsunami, earthquakes, and so on. Yeah, uh, that's only to remind you with the title of the unit. Now, let's study some new vocabulary. The first one, it is absolutely. We say that volcanoes are absolutely destructive. Do you know what is the meaning of absolutely? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely means with no qualification, restriction, or a limitation totally. Absolutely. The next word is demanding. Demanding. We say that the shortage of water and food is a demanding problem. What's the meaning of demanding? Demanding means requiring much skill or effort. Yeah, demanding. We see that many people think that designing buildings that can resist earthquakes is impractical. Impractical. What's the meaning of impractical? Impractical, uh, impractical means not sensible or realistic. Yeah, not realistic, something that uh, from our imagination only. The next one is listen. Uh, we should listen water pollution to keep our environment clean. Listen. What's the meaning of listen? Listen means diminish, to make or become less. Yeah, if you want to make something less than it is, then we say we are listening it. The next word, map out. We see that scientists map out in your researchers to save water. What's the meaning of map out? Map out. Map out. It means to plan something carefully or to use uh, something to explain what your plans are in detail. Yeah, it is to plan for something. The next word is supply. Supply. Water is in short supply in many countries in the world. They need help. Yeah, if they have a short supply in something, then they need help. What is the supply? So, supply means an amount of something that is available for use. It may mean a stock, yeah, the amount of something that is available for use. The next word is wasteful. Look at the picture. Uh, they are washing their car, but it's wasteful of water. Using too much water is really wasteful. wasteful. Then wasteful means using or spending something in a careless way and causing some of it to be wasted, okay? The next word, it is proposed, proposed, and expression pros and cons. We see that scientists have proposed many ways to solve the problem, but these all have pros and cons. Then, what's the meaning of proposed and pros and cons? Yeah, propose means uh, to put forward an idea or plan for consideration or discussion by others. Means to propose. And what about the word pros and cons? Yeah, pros and cons means the advantages and disadvantages of something. Then pros and cons means advantages and disadvantages. And uh, then we have the word standard, standard. Contractors should stick to the standard measure in building and salination plans. 
if they are designing something, they should stick to the standard measure. Then the word standard mean, uh, it means serving as or conforming to a standard of measurement or band. Yeah, it means the best thing in uh, that measure. Now, my dear pupils, I want you to open your status book, page 94. Let's answer the question there. Yes, exercise one, we have to answer these questions. Uh, why does the water level in rivers rise? Why do you think the water in rivers rise? Uh, look at the photo of the Thames barrier. Why do you think it was demanding as for engineers? Question C. Why would it be impractical to have out a building that would be absolutely safe in an earthquake? Question D. Uh, what kinds of building materials do you think would lessen the impact of earthquake? Now, let's uh, check your answers. The first question, why do the water level in rivers rise? Yeah, why do things they rise? Yeah, because of rain. Rain falling on hills runs into rivers and raises the water level. Question me. Uh, look at the photo of the Thames barrier. Why do you think it was a demanding task for engineers? Yes, it had to be built in a river where the water level was constantly rising and falling with the pipe. So it was a demanding task for engineers. Question C. Uh, why would it be impractical to map out a building that would be absolutely safe? in an earthquake. Why do you think it is impractical? Yeah, because earthquakes are too powerful. We can't stop the impact of the earthquakes. Which indeed, what kinds of building material do you think would lessen the impact of an earthquake? Yeah, it's not. We can use non-rigid materials. For example, we can use rubber, wood, and also we can use some plastics. Yeah. Now, let's go to exercise two. Here we want to match these verbs from the Arctic uh, that we have read before with their correct meanings. We want to use each word in a meaning sentence after that. What are these words? We have a point, clear up, generate, Accumulate, attempt, and design. Let's imagine these verbs with their meanings. Okay, let's start. Avoid. What does the meaning of avoid? Yeah, excellent. It's number four. It means escape. Escape from something, it means to avoid it. Clear up. What does the meaning of clear up? Yeah, it means to exclude, to throw out rock. And what about the word generate? Generate means to produce or make or create something that wasn't found before. And the word accumulate, accumulate, yes, means to hold and save something. What about the word attempt? Yeah, it means to make an effort. Uh, to achieve something, it means to try, try hard and try and try. And the word design, of course, means to think of or to plan. Okay, uh, now it's your turn to put these words in a meaningful sentences. Use the words avoid, clear up, generate, accumulate, template, and design in a meaningful sentence. Now let's go to the second part in our lesson today, think and speak. Now we want to discuss this question with your friends. Okay, we have three questions. The first question says, uh, can you think of examples of remarkable power of nature? 
The, next, the question says, uh, what do we will do which shows that they respect this power? The next question says, uh, let the safety ideas. The safety ideas, uh, which the writer mentions. Uh, can you think of other ways of preventing disasters? Now, let's discuss the questions with your friends. Can you think of examples of the remarkable power of nature? Yeah, we studied them before. We have volcanoes, earthquakes, tsunamis, storms, hurricanes, and so on. Yeah, thank you. Uh, letter B, uh, what do people do which shows that they respect this power? Of course, they are afraid of these powers. They do their best to avoid the damage that is caused by these powers. The next question says, uh, list the safety ideas which the director mentions. What are the safety uh, powers and the safety ideas which the director mentioned in the text? Yeah, they mention dams, fluid barrier, building is on rollers or spraying is, and special building materials like plastic, wood, rubber, and so on. Okay, what your troubles? Let's go to the next question. Can you think of other ways of preventing disasters? I think it's up to you. You can think of ways. You are our future engineers and you will imagine and discover things that would prevent disaster or at least uh, lessen the effect or impact of these disasters. Now, let's go to the part of writing. And your task today, that you are going to describe an experience you had in a store. Imagine that there was a store, and what did you do? Describe this. And on your writing, you have to cover these parts. You have to cover uh, where were you, when the story started or happened, who were you think, and who were you with, who, who were with you. Uh, did the storm cause any accidents? And what is the damage that the storm caused? Uh, and how did you cope with the situation? What did you do with the situation? And the last question, how did the incident end? Okay, now write this paragraph in your uh, notebook and we may check them in another file. Now, my reviewables, thank you for paying attention with me. Until we meet in our next lesson, goodbye for now. I hope you all success. Thank you and goodbye.